Uh, good morning. Six and a half minutes past. A, a teaching union is warning about pupils sexually harassing teachers and fellow children. They're using mobiles to film up their skirts and down their tops to share sexual images and videos. BBC Radio Accounts discovered in just two years there's been more than 160 suspensions in Kent schools for sexual misconduct. Sarah Dream from the End Violence Against Women Coalition uh, believes better sex education in schools is the key. Uh, she's on the line now. Sarah, good morning. Oh, what, good morning. What should we be teaching our children in those sex education classes to stop this happening? Um, we need classes which are basically not just the biology of reproduction and sexual health and so on. We need classes which are sex and relationships and which give young people the opportunity to uh, have conversations with adults that they trust about what it means to be in a relationship, about everything that's associated with sex and sexuality, about how adults who respect each other treat each other, about what the law is, because mm. there's very disturbing research that shows young people can't um, explain very well what the law on sexual consent is, and all of these related areas. And actually, this, this measure is happening. So last year, in 2017, a cross-party amendment um, succeeded in Parliament, so work from all the sides of, of the... Um, yeah, I was going to say, we are changing, aren't we, the way we teach sex yes, in schools, and, which, will, which will include relationship yeah. Uh, yeah, advice. So, so in, in, a, in a sense, that's going to happen. Mm -hmm. Will that stop it? Um, it's only part of the answer. Um, it's a really important part, however. We have uh, let this slide for many, many years by letting sex and relationships remain in a kind of voluntary, um, non-compulsory um, style, which means that we've uh, relied on schools who kind of understand that there's a relationship between doing this stuff well and kids attaining well and being confident young people, um, seeking it out and doing the class as well, and it's not good enough. We have to have it compulsory. It's got to be something young people get the chance to talk about mm. when they're at school um, and there's different ways of doing that which we can uh, talk about if you like um, and in so it's 2019 we're in the kind of the period now where the guidance for the for sex and relationships education is being prepared and then schools have a, a grace period of a year to prepare for the teaching okay. what we'd say it's important is that there needs to be resource to back this up so it's unfair to expect um, schools just, to just, just, a, pile just a, a geography teacher to do it that's, that's that's what's happened in the past isn't it that this has not really been taken that seriously and whoever's available did the did the teaching as it were and maybe that's where we need to let's i'm going to bring in tom rogers from the safe at school campaign uh, tom do you believe that those better uh, sex education classes to include relationship advice is the way forward well no whatever the extent of the problems where they do occur they're very serious matter and so they do need to be tackled and we've got to have an honest debate about the best way of doing that but what's clear is that more and more of this kind of sex education, especially where it's compulsory and pushes out the parents, is not the answer. In fact, it's part of the problem because the evidence is showing that what's actually put in children at risk is precisely this official normalization of underage sex by the authorities and in our schools. It's this uh, message that children must be free to decide for themselves when they're ready to embark on sexual relationships. And then we're applying them with free contraception, sex advice, everything else behind their parents. So you believe back. telling and just telling them not to children vulnerable. So you think just telling children Tom, risk. hang on. So you think yeah. just telling them not to will stop them doing it, do you? Well it's part of that we need a whole different approach to sex education. Uh, we need we need we need to prioritize um, family life and marriage. And yes, they do need boundaries. Look, sex under age 16 is supposed to be a criminal offence. The legal age of consent is 16. Yeah. And that's a law that's there to, uh, to protect our children. Well, it is. Yeah, in it practice, does. the okay. authorities operate as if it was only 13. And the attitude is, as long as it's consensual and they're applied with all well, the I think it, I think it need, depends. I think it depends on how old each okay. each person is. I think what they're saying is, is it in the public interest to take two 15-year-olds who are involved in a sexual relationship to court? And I think they probably decide not to. Sarah Green, I'm going to come back to you. What do you make of what Tom Rogers has said? Um, I hear concerns from um, those who are 
really a concern to say that parents have to be involved and this has to involve families. And actually, we agree with that. And we right. would recommend that when schools roll this out well, they you know, don't just whack in a couple of lessons twice a term and think that the job's done. What they need to do is get really good advice on good sex and relationships education, which is based on facts and the law and what we know. But I think what people, Tom's saying is it shouldn't happen at school. It should be left to the parents. No, schools, um, sh- it, it won't happen for all young people if it's simply left to parents. And this is a difficult conversation, but we need to have it. What schools should do is get parents in as well. So we recommend that at the beginning of the term when you're starting, for example, you hold a parent session uh, straight after school so it's accessible for as many people as possible. Get parents in, show them the materials mm. that you're going to use and talk about the themes that you're going to use. And in my field of work, which is abuse of women and girls. So we're working all the time with um, those who support um, survivors of rape and domestic violence, for example. What we find is when this work is done well in schools, sometimes uh, parents, particularly mothers, feel more able to speak up about what's happening to them and get help. Now, that's, that isn't the reason for doing this, but we can't remain in denial about the okay. scale of abusive relationships in our society and how we don't take responsibility for them before they happen. Okay, Tom Rogers... Uh, what respect is. Tom Rogers, I mean, the, the fact is, not all parents will be uh, teaching their children about this, so isn't it really up to the schools to make sure it's done? Well, what we know is that the majority of parents are actually uh, quite comfortable with talking to their children about that. There was a, a survey, for instance, by the National Association of Head Teachers a few years ago, said 79% of parents were entirely comfortable talking about the, talking to their children about sex and relationships. But the thing is, parents have been so undermined for so long, many do lack confidence. And the, the school, they, they do have a role in providing support for the, for the parents. Um, and the, but the thing is, it's even where it doesn't happen at home, if it does happen in schools, you've got to give parents at least the option to, to take care of that thing themselves, mm. give them the right of withdrawal. Because what you can't happen have happening in schools is teacher which undermines what's happening in the home. That's given the children a very dangerous mixed message. OK, Tom, thank you. And thank you to Sarah Green uh, from the End Violence Against Women uh, Coalition. Uh, thank you both for joining us. Just a quick one from you, really. Do you believe that uh, the schools are the right people to ta- teach children about sex and relationships? Or do you think it should be down to the parents and you should be able to opt out of that education in schools if you want to? You won't be able to in the future.